Hey everybody, it is Day from OrgoneGenerator.com coming to you with another video here. In this video, we are going to go through part two of our three-part series on how to use an Orgone Generator effectively. Part two is called Creating Effective Operations, Structural Links Applied. Uh, we covered part one in another video. Part one is called How to Create Successful Manifestations, Life Energy, Structural Links, and Why Manifestations Fail. <clears throat> in part one, we covered the big picture issues, you know, what is life energy, what are structural links, and what is the primary reason manifestations fail, uh, what are elements to a successful manifestation. You can see part one uh, already on our YouTube channel or at the bottom of the part one article on our website. And in part two, we're going to get very practical. We're going to cover how to set up operations. I'm actually going to set up uh, your first operation. I'm going to create target links. So what I'm really going to do is go through Article 2 in detail. It's going to be another long video like uh, Part 1. And I'm just going to follow the outline, go through, provide information that we didn't provide in the article, and more context like usual. And I'm actually going to, I mean, you can already see it here, I'm going to create target links. We're going to create some trend links, trend links for your first operation. Uh, show you how to deal with multiple targets. I've got four generators in front of me, if you can see. Um, I've got a JU-1000, I've got a PFC-2000, so we've got an entry-level device, JU-1000. PFC-2000, that's a mid-level device, that's our strongest mid-level device. The Performer 2400 HD, one of our, one of our most flexible devices, is a heavy-duty device. And the beautiful RAD5, another heavy-duty device. And if you see right now, you know, they're all touching. Um, so we basically have, I mean, I guess I could make that touch that, but I'm going to show you how to link all of these uh, if you have them sitting together or if you have them in different locations. I'm going to show you how to create a, uh, an operation to link all of them. So we're, this is going to be a really meaty video. I would actually recommend, like I said, I'm going to dive deep. I'm not going to hold back. The goal of this series is to help you use an organ generator most effectively if, if you already have one or if you don't have one to show you how one can be used effectively. So I'm not going to hold back. I'm going to go into detail. Uh, frankly, I would recommend you read the article, uh, part two article, part one and part two article closely. And for this video, you know, get comfortable and it wouldn't be a bad idea to take notes. So we start the part two article by saying, find your own flow. And what that means is that these are flexible devices. They're meant to have the ability to accommodate a lot of different methods. And there's no one right way to use an orgone generator. And some people use orgone generators without much instruction very intuitively and very powerfully. And so some of these parts, you know, some of the, some of the sections in this article, we even debated putting in because we didn't want to put that in people's heads. So we, we don't want to destroy the purity of an individual approach, approach and we mean that. So don't take what we say as dogma. Um, you know, we have a Bruce Lee quote, which I think is really useful here. Adapt what is useful, reject what is useless, and add what is specifically your own. So when you deal with your generator and you approach it and you want to set up operations, you want to manifest with it, Consider your own unique approach. Are you more of an intuitive person? Are you more of an analytical person? We provide really good principles, but, but make your approach your own. That will be the most powerful. That will create the strongest energetic connections with the outcomes you want, and that will lead to best results. So definitely make your orgone generator and the, the, the way in which you use it, make it your own. Uh, but take the, some of these principles that we're providing you know, take them, and if they're useful, use them, and if they're not, don't worry about them. We think they're useful. Uh, I'm fairly analytical. Nick is uh, more intuitive. So there's a lot of ways that these things can work. We'll get into more complex methods in part three, which we're gonna put out uh, in the next couple weeks. But part two, we wanna get some basics down, some basic application down. And one of the first things that you should do with, uh, oh, and another thing, you will get better with practice, right? This is a tool, right? We say this, this is a tool, not a toy. Uh, so like any tool, you will get better with practice. Just just think of another tool. Imagine a buzz saw or something. You've never used it before. You, you wanna start a wood shop. You, you've never used it before. Would you expect to be an expert on day one? Probably not. 
So why would you expect to be an expert with one of these things on day one? Now, people do get these things and see results very quickly. So like I said, it can happen very quickly, especially with people who are approach it very intuitively and, and kind of have a natural knack for it or there's a natural strength to their intuition in the way in which they use it. So you can see results very quickly, but I think these things are powerful enough and complex enough so that it, your ability to use them and the results you can get can deepen over time. It's much like meditation. Uh, the first few times you do it or the first, you know, more than a few times you do it, your mind's bouncing everywhere, your mind's bouncing everywhere. Uh, it's not as good, but the more you practice, the deeper you can go. And the deeper you go, you realize there's really no bottom. Using one of these things, in my experience, is very similar to that. So I would say don't uh, put a lot of pressure on yourself starting off. Uh, go for what you want, certainly. You know, what, what these are all about is getting the results that you want, getting results. You, you get these things to, get, to, to manifest better, to get results. And that, that's why we're doing this series. But know that with these devices, uh, you can keep going deeper and deeper and deeper and continue to get better and better results. So approach it with a beginner's mind like anything. Approach it with a beginner's mind. Uh, do what works for you and know that these devices can support a variety of approaches of approaches, and can continue to support your, your manifestation goals for a very long time. Okay, one of the first things you should do when we think when creating uh, or when when working on a manifestation with a generator is create a target link for yourself. So like we said in part one, uh, the basic equation of target plus trend plus life force, that's kind of how we're framing this or how I'm going to frame this. You know, a target represented by a target link, a trend represented by a trend link, and then the generator provides the life energy. So one of the first things you can do, you know, you don't necessarily have to break down every single manifestation into that. You know, some people just put an intention on the machine and it's implied that they're the target. That's, that can work, that's fine. Some of the most intuitive people do that. However, we recommend creating a target link for yourself and um, <clears throat> just to be kind of clear about, okay, I'm the target, you know, if you're, if you're focusing on yourself. If you're, if you're manifesting for yourself, I'm the target and here's the trend, here's my intention, here's the desired outcome or result that I want. And then the generator, like we said, provides the life energy. So one of the first uh, basic tasks that you can do and that is very useful, we think, is to create a target link for yourself. So a target link is just a structural link representing the target, for instance, you. As we said in part one, there's two types of target, uh, two types of structural links: an identical structural link, and an equivalent structural link. Uh, for yourself, since you have so much control over it, we recommend creating an identical structural link for yourself. Why not? You can you, you easily have access to your own DNA, so just go ahead and do it. Uh, and so the process for that, but an equivalent structural link can be okay. I said this in part one video, the very first time I had a generator used on me, uh, the target link was an equivalent structural link. It was a picture of me uh, versus something uh, containing my DNA. So what I'm gonna do, so here's the basic way to create a target link. I've already got it written down here. I've got a few little exhibits bouncing around. So, <clears throat> Here is the basic format for, yeah, you can see that. Here's the basic format for a target link. You wanna write target at the top, just use a note card. See, I've got a note card and actually I showed this on part one, but here's what happens if you do a lot of uh, structural links by note card. I've got a, this is a whole stack, fills up a whole, this was like a sandwich box or something. And you can kind of see right there a lot of different things. I use post-it notes, I use note cards. That's primarily what I use. I don't have a printer, unfortunately, um, or I use the software. I don't have a printer, unfortunately, so I'm not usually printing off pictures. Uh, that takes some setup, that takes some, some thinking. And a lot of times I'm just jotting down something quick. You know, there's a combination. When you start using this a lot, you'll start using it for everything. So you use it for longer term stuff, or you might use it for short term stuff. So, you know, for instance, uh, those are my structural links inside the RAD5 right now. I've got the generators linked. Uh, 
within that stack inside the, the Rad 5, there's some long-term stuff that I want, and there's some very short-term stuff, including stuff relating to just shooting this video. So you can really do, and I think most people will probably have longer term goals and they might have short term goals. Let's say that you really need energy for an hour or two or focus or motivation for an hour or two to do some work. That would be something more short term. Let's say that you want uh, financial success or something like that. That would be a longer term one. Um, so you can play with the structural links. Maybe you create, uh, you know, use a picture, you print something off for a, for a longer term one. Right now, pretty much all of mine are, uh, are handwritten notes. So here's a really basic way to set up an identical structural link for yourself. Write target at the top, write your name, handwrite. It doesn't technically matter, but a handwritten signature we think can, since you're putting your own life energy into it and it's your own, uh, your own handwriting, which is unique usually, you can, uh, it can strengthen the energetic connection. So write target, write your name, write your birthday, and then attach a piece of DNA. Could be a piece of hair, could be a fingernail clipping, anything with your DNA really. And I'll show you an example. Um, so here is an example of a target link for my dog, okay? And I made this today, I actually have another one in there, but I made this just to, to make it clear. So I wrote target at the top, I wrote my dog's name, Keza. She's a Shih Tzu Poodle. She's really, uh, really cute, very small dog. And then I, I cut a piece of her fur with just with scissors and I taped it, right? Very easy. This is basically what it should look like for you. I don't actually know her birthday. I don't know when she was born. I know when I got her, I don't know when she was born. But it doesn't really matter. Um, and when you, when you write this, uh, also imprint kind of your cons. You know, for yourself, uh, you can just do this, you know, write your name, write your birthday, signature, sure. Uh, for someone else or for like a pet or something, you know, when I run a trend on her, I, I have her in my mind as well, you know, so I don't, um, you know, it's not just write it and not think about it. I think about her as I'm writing it. That can, that can also help string imprint, uh, energetically imprint uh, uh, her essence into the target link. But this is basically what a target link looked like. You should be able to make this very quickly for yourself, right? Target. So like we said, you know, target, target, your name, birthday, DNA. And in this case, like I said, I don't know her birthday. Uh, and it's that simple. Then you have a target link for yourself. If you're going to create target links for multiple people, then, yeah, let me see if I can, got limited space for this camera. Uh, if you're going to create target links for multiple people, uh, let's say in your family, it would be good to, to make an identical structural link if you can, if you can get you know a piece of their hair. might feel a little weird asking, so that's why you can use an equivalent structural link. Theoretically, they should work the same. A recent picture is better. Just think about why that would be true. Let's say you've got, uh, you want to make a target link for someone who is 60 years old. Should you use a picture from when they were 20 years old or from uh, two months ago? It's probably a closer connection if you use something uh, more recent. So a recent picture, and, and I said this, I believe in the article, try to avoid brands, try to avoid airbrushing, things like that. All of that has its own energetic signature, energetic imprint, uh, potentially embedded operations. That's what you see in magazines. When you see glossy covered magazines and models on them, uh, you know, and they're, they're basically trying to sell you something. There are other operations and energetic uh, intentions that are being put into that photo, namely to, to sell you something. So it's best to, you know, for when I, when I use pictures, I like it to just be plain clothes. I like it to be recent. I like it to not, uh, you know, if, if the picture really captures someone at someone's essence for you, that's cool. But uh, otherwise, I like to keep it very simple and very plain and basic, personally. Uh, but do what works for you. Uh, a lot of things can work. So that is a way to create a target link for yourself. If you want to create multiple target links, you know, I have multiple target links because I've got my dog and I've got myself. What you can do, so you want to keep your operations separate, right? I don't want to oper run an operation. Um, I don't necessarily want to run the same operations on myself as I do for my pet, right? So what you can do if you want is write something like target one, target two for yourself, 
okay? And then when you write a trend, you can say trend for target one or trend for me slash Dave slash target one, right? So uh, that's a good way to keep trends and keep operations separate. Let's say you have four or five family members you wanna run an operation for. You gotta keep track of all those people. So you can do it on a larger sheet of paper, uh, something like this, you know, you could do it on something like this where you've got target one, target two. Basically, this means trend for target two, another trend for target two. So you can keep it organized like this. You could use note cards and just say, like we said, trend for target one. Keep all those note cards together. You could paper clip them together, doesn't matter. <clears throat> but you want to, when you start running a lot of operations and you start running it for multiple targets, you want to be a, keep track of your operations. Number one, so that you know what's occurring, what you're trying to get occur, to occur for each person. And then also so that uh, you have an idea of how many operations you're running and how much output there is, how much output you're using. But like we said, these generators don't have, you know, even four generators, which is a lot of output, you know, performer, a lot of output, rad five, a lot of output. You can get a lot done with uh, with the PFC 2000. JU 1000, solid entry level device, uh, not as much as the others, obviously. So even with this many generators, it's not unlimited. I mean, if you use it for tons and tons of stuff, uh, it's never unlimited. So what I would say is you wanna, you wanna have an idea of how much organ output you think you're putting out and test that and you want to keep track of the operation so you can use your device most efficiently and most effectively. Um, something we get asked about that I mentioned in this section is the range of a generator. So that's a, so by, by creating a target link, we believe that, you know, if I take this target link and I put it in my RAD5 or I put it in front of a, an output tube or I put it on the device, uh, under our model, my pet would stay, my dog would stay connected to the energy of a generator no matter where she is in the world, right? Because with adequate structural links, we believe life energy transfers at any distance without loss. Uh, sometimes I get the question, well, not sometimes, a lot. We get the question a lot, what is the range of a generator? What is the range of the performer or the JU-1000? You know, I have a thousand square foot apartment. There's three people there. I've got some plants. I've got a pet. Uh, is this, will this generator cover this space? And as you can tell from, from the discussion, there's both a physical and non-physical aspect to the distance that an orgone generator, non-physical I'll say, uh, uh, aspect to the, to the distance that an orgone generator can cover. If you can stay connected to an orgone generator anywhere in the world, well, then you don't really have to worry about the surrounding space. If you've got a target link in, you're connected. Uh, at the same time, uh, when you just turn a generator on and there's no target link anywhere, we believe it will saturate the area, it kind of shoots you know, with these output tubes, it sends orgone out into the surrounding area. And anyone, even if they don't have a target link for them, can be affected by it. And so what we believe and the way we describe it is an, an organ generator will saturate the surrounding area. And if you leave it on 24 seven, which we recommend, it's one of the great things about these devices is they are very, very well made, you know, German engineering, Carl is, uh, Carl is very good at, at making these devices. They're very sturdy, they last for years. You can leave them on 24 seven, which we recommend. And what they do is it, they'll saturate the area unless they're pulled and it'll kind of just keep going, keep going, keep going, saturate the area. And then uh, unless it's pulled, now what pulls orgone from a space? Mostly uh, living things. So if there are people in and out, they're gonna come in, they're gonna get, they're gonna take some of that orgone with them, right? They're gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna uh, saturate them a little bit, maybe not fully, but they're gonna take some and they're gonna leave. And that's gonna pull it from the area, pull it from the surrounding area. So. If you have uh, a location where there's a lot of traffic in and out of your place, or you have a large number of people in your, in your, in your home, for instance, your office, uh, if you have pets, if you have a lot of plants, all of those things basically need to be saturated themselves. 
uh, and it's kind of like a saturation point where if you get saturated with orgone, then you won't take in any more. But then if it kind of flows out of you, then you can take more in. So if every single thing, uh, every single living thing in your space got saturated, well, then the orgone's gonna kind of keep going, right? But um, in most cases, if there's, most people probably don't get saturated if they're just in and out. So, um, so basically a generator will saturate an area unless the orgone from that area, from the generator, is pulled from the area. And uh, another thing that can pull it is, is kind of a negative environment. You know, we talk about negative frequencies and toxic um, uh, pollution in our studies. That sort of thing is potentially door, deadly organ, uh, we believe. And that sort of thing can pull positive org orgone from the area. So consider your environment. If you live in a pristine natural environment. Let's say you live in a house that's surrounded by trees out in the middle of a forest and there's a flowing river nearby, then uh, that's that area is high orgone itself. So it would be, the area may already be saturated and it, even if you have a smaller generator, uh, it, it'll be enough to cover it because there's so much orgone already there and this is just adding to it. If you live in the middle of a dirty polluted city and it's crowded and uh, there's uh, negative objects all over the place um, and people are in and out. Well, it would take a lot more to kind of saturate that area. Does that make sense? So there's both a physical and non-physical element to uh, how orgone can come in contact with a person. We believe the best way for yourself is to create a target link for yourself. We believe the best way to do manifestations is to create a target link for yourself. But just know that if you have a generator on, I, I've had people come in, uh, when I've had these four devices, I keep these on all the time. I've had people come into my house and say, whoa, what's going on in here? Like I feel something. And I didn't have a target link for them. I didn't even show them the generator. Generators in the back room can be a weird discussion depending on who it is. Uh, the generator's in a back room, doors closed, but they've been on for weeks. So the whole area is just saturated. And I'm already, you know, I've got a target link for myself. I'm saturated. And so there's orgone to, to, to go around, if you will. So people come in and they say, whoa, I, I really feel something different. Like, what, what's, what is this? Like, the, the energy in here is crazy. So that can, uh, that can happen. Just know that even if you don't have a target link for someone, if they come into close physical physical proximity with a generator, with multiple generators, and there's enough orgone to go around, uh, to to put it that way, that the orgone can affect them. So they could be saturated by it. They could just pull a little bit from the area. So that's how that works. <clears throat> okay. So section three, we talk about setting up meta trends for all operations, to apply to all operations. So this is, and we recommend three. This is an interesting section. So I wanna just explain these. I think we explained it pretty well in the article. But basically, you just wanna use your generator most effectively, uh, and you wanna make sure that what you want to happen happens in the way that you want it to happen, okay? So let me just go through these. There, there can be other meta trends. I'm going to mention two uh, that I've said recently, or one that I've said recently to a few people and another one that I've used myself. <clears throat> you could come up with your own. Like I said, these things are very flexible. We don't know everything. Test everything. If you come up with one that you think really works for you, let us know. We want to know, and we mean that. So we recommend three. The first is equal and separate operations. I've got, and here are my actual, let me see what I've got in here. Oh, this is next. <clears throat> so here are my actual three meta trends that I've got just on the top there. So the first is equal and separate operations. And look what I've done here. What I've just done is equal and separate operations and I have apply to all operations. So operations can be thought of, the, the, the analogy we use is uh, glasses that need to be filled up with water, except the glasses are the operations and the water is the orgone. So when you energize an operation, when you energize a manifestation, each glass is a manifestation basically. <clears throat> uh, 
not all manifestations are the same size. Uh, so let's say that, uh, I think I used the example, if you want to meditate every morning for two minutes, well, two minutes is not so hard. I mean, every morning, you know, consistency can be tough, but two minutes is not so hard. If you said, you know, become a Zen master in a month, well, okay, that's a, that sounds like a bigger operation than meditate for two minutes every morning. You know, it's the difference between an eight ounce glass and a shot glass, right? One will fill up more quickly. So that's a good way to think about operations, especially if you're running lots of, let's say you're running 10 operations. Uh, how big are they to you? You know, you have to consider where, you know, and, and think practically about this. On one hand, you know, people like to say everything is 50-50. It either happens or it doesn't. That's true from one perspective, but we like to think about operations from a more practical standpoint. With enough energy, anything is possible. But we like to think about things from a practical standpoint. Consider where we have momentum. Uh, we think generators work best with existing momentum. And just think about that. If 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 you have momentum, there's already energy, life energy going in that direction. So supercharge it. If you're working against momentum, well, there's life energy blocking you in essence. So you're going to have to have more energy to push that out. So we like to look where we have momentum. We like to look for leverage points. And I'll talk about that a little bit. But to the equal and separate operations meta trend, the point of this meta trend is to make sure that your generator is charging each operation equally and separately, as it says. So in essence, each glass is getting filled up at the same rate versus the one large glass getting filled up first and all the small glass is not getting filled up at all. Maybe the large glass is huge and never gets totally filled up, which means the small glasses never get totally, never get filled up at all. So with the equal and separate operation, operations, every glass gets filled up at the same rate. So the, the conclusion of that is that if you have a really big operation, it might, and you have other operations going, some might get filled up before the others, especially if, if you have a big operation. You know, a very large operation or working against uh, a lot of momentum, that might take a while to fill up. Meanwhile, the other ones are filling up much more quickly and you're, you're seeing results there. Framing, how you frame your operations can matter on that point, but just take that analogy of glasses. Each, each manifestation is a glass. Each operation is a glass. Consider how large it is to you. You know, in a way, how, how likely you think something is going uh, is to happen will affect your attention, intentions to an extent anyway. <clears throat> so I would just be as intentional as possible in scoping the manifestation. And again, this is a very analytical approach. I'm pretty analytical in how I approach things. Uh, if you're more intuitive, just go for it. The power, you might have a strong energetic connection to a big outcome intuitively. Uh, use that. And, and I do too. I use the, uh, the, the analytical approach to get space to be more intuitive but do what works for you. But just consider, we, we think this is a good meta trend in order to, to make sure that orgone is going where you think it is. And then uh, just test it, test it, um, keep track of things. You know, are you, are you getting the results that you want? If so, um, great. If not, why not? And then modify. Maybe you need to reframe your operation, reframe your intention. Maybe it's too big. Maybe it's too small. Does it conflict with something else? Consider all of that. So, um, so that's the first meta trend. I think it's a good one. So, with any generator, there are three places that you can put structural links that we recommend. Number one, in front of the silver output tube. Uh, in terms of a physical proximity of how orgone moves, we believe it comes out of these silver output tubes. So you can put it right here, perfect, it's right there. Because as it comes out, perhaps it dissipates, right? You could put it just close to the generator, that would work. But we think it's best to put it right in front of the silver output tube. The second place you can put it is on the silver plates that are on a lot of different devices. Uh, these are called well plates, beamer plates, charging plates. So you can put it right there. That's what they're there for, to put structural links there. Um, if, you have, if you have a generator like this JU-1000 that, that does not have a charging plate, it has an output tube, you can put it in front of the output tube. You can even put it on the device, but you kind of want to be close to, to where the orgone is, uh, is meant to come out. 
And then if you have a RAD5 or an HG12, you obviously want to put it in the center. And what these lights are, are the individual generators controlled by each dial, right? If I turned one of those dials, one of the lights would start blinking because the frequency would change. But put it right in the middle, and that's what you, that's what you want to do with the structural links, any structural link, these included. And some people have asked, uh, do, you know, do these metatrends, do they count, uh, will they take juice from the, from the device basically? Will they take their, uh, their own organ output? Should they be counted as a trend? Should they be counted as their own operation? We don't think so. They're more meant to direct all operations, so we don't think these pull, uh, they're, more, they're more of a modulator, if you will. They kind of apply to all operations, but we don't think they take as much as much or any uh, orgone themselves. So when I'm counting operations, you know, target trend for all the, for, for different people and different things I want to do, I don't count the metatrends as their own separate operation if I'm keeping count, right? So if I've got 10 of these, well, okay, I'm going to say I have 10, not that I have 13, okay? So equal and separate operations is the first one. Uh, second one that I mentioned, I had the wrong order here. <clears throat> Least orgone for the most results, maximum results, minimum effort. You can phrase that in a, in a few different ways, but the idea is if you're splitting orgone, in essence, if you're splitting the orgone output, imagine a stream of water and you gotta fill up all these different buckets, right? What's happening is the water is being split. So if you are splitting orgone, you want to, and you want to fill up the buckets as fast as possible and not waste a drop. That's what this operation does. Least orgone for the most results. Another way you can phrase that, uh, and this is Nick's phrasing, is maximum results, minimum effort. In essence, this is saying uh, basically a minimum effective dose, if you've ever heard that, uh, that idea. But so do exactly what is necessary, only do what is necessary and not a drop more. That's what this is meant to do. Uh, to enable you to, because the more orgone you have, the more manifestations you can energize simultaneously. So you want to use it efficiently. You want to use the, the right amount for the right job type of thing. Okay, so that's number two. And number three, this is a favorite one. Ground unwanted consequences. Now this is one of the ones that we debated about actually putting in because in a way you can put in your head that something unintended or something that you can get something in a way that you don't, that you wouldn't like how you got it. You got it, but you didn't like how you got it. And we, we for intuitive people, like I said, we don't want to destroy the purity of an individual approach. So we, in a way, we were kind of worried about putting that in and putting that idea in people's heads. However, we use it ourselves. So we decided to do it. In essence, uh, in the article, I call this the genie rule. The genie rule, be careful what you wish for. So imagine you find a, a magic lamp, you rub it, and the genie comes out, and he gives you three wishes. Well, it's like the movie Aladdin or like any, a number of stories throughout history. The genie will give you what you want, but often not in the way that you expect. And that's what... This is, you know, some people have called our devices a personal genie, and I, and I get that, having used them. So you need to make sure that you get what you want, but in the way that you want as well. In the article, I use the example of, you know, you want to manifest a large sum of money quickly. Well, then your parents die in a, you know, a horrible fire or something, and they left you in an, a, lar you know, a large inheritance. Uh, but that, but you feel awful because your parents died. You know that sort of thing would. Um, I'm not saying that would happen. I'm just saying that it's possible. Or or a, a bank robber runs through your yard and drops off a large amount of stolen money. Um, suddenly you have a large amount of money like you wanted and quickly, but you didn't. Uh, but you don't have it in the way you want it, right? So. <clears throat> This is designed to make sure that you're getting what you want in the way that you want, in a way that would be acceptable to you, and to, to, avoid, to avoid unwanted consequences, to avoid um, unintentional consequences. So we believe it works for that, and we think it's a good meta trend to use, so we would recommend using it. Okay, section four. So in section four, we talk about creating trend links. 
So you've got your target link, and now, and you've got your meta trends, but now you want to create trend links for your manifestations. You want to create trend links for your desired outcomes, results, and effects, your intentions. There's a lot of options to use when creating a trend link. So obviously my trend links are mostly handwritten notes, handwritten intentions. Uh, that's actually a goal of mine in the new year is to use more varied structural links, more varied trend links in particular. Uh, I want to start using pictures. Uh, I'd like to put together a vision board, mainly because I've, I've just gotten to, to using handwritten intentions so much because they're so convenient. But I, I want to test the effect of using, for instance, a picture of something, especially for my longer term intentions. So. Uh, so what you can do, so there's a lot of options. Really, as we say, a, a trend link is really anything that represents the desired effect, result, or outcome of your manifestation. So there are a lot of options. And what you can try to do is yourself test different types of trend links. An example of a, of a couple trend links for an operation, let's say you wanna be more confident. Well, you could write down be more confident, confidence. Another example is you could use a picture of a person that you believe is very competent, in essence, kind of taking some of their essence. Um, so, you know, an actor or a, uh, a sports star, or so, just someone who you view as confident. If you associate them with confident, that, uh, confidence, that creates an energetic connection. So you could take a picture of them, write trend on it, uh, even write confidence. You don't even necessarily have to write confidence if, if that's what they represent to you, but you could. Uh, write that down and then energize that. That would be your trend link. That would be fine. So there's a lot of options, but that's, that's an example of a handwritten intention and then a picture, maybe with some writing on it. If um, attractiveness, same sort of thing. You could use an actor, lots of uh, attractive actors or models. So you could use that. Again, it's a matter of what is the energetic connection to your desired outcome? Do you associate what you're using or what you're writing with, a, with the desired outcome? When I make a trend link, I try to envision the outcome or result that I want. I try to visualize it, I try to feel it. If it's something for myself, I try to think of a time when I felt that way or when I had that result, if I've ever had it previously. So, and then, I, and then when I'm writing, I focus that feeling, that emotion, that visualization into writing as I write it to kind of strengthen the energetic connection. That works for me pretty well. I would recommend doing that. Give it a try. So, um, <clears throat> that, that's, that's one way to do it. You can just write it, but I tend to think that, you know, it's all about creating a strong energetic connection. And the format doesn't matter. What really matters is the energetic connection to that trend. So any way that you can strengthen an energetic connection, we'd recommend doing that. And there's gonna be a lot of different methods for this. Do what works for you, find what works for you, uh, try out different things, but there's a lot of ways to do this. And as we said before, uh, if there are multiple targets, uh, specify who the trend is for. So keep it in order, that way you can keep count of how many you're doing, estimated output you know can i do 20 can i do 30 or can i just do five given the size of my operations and the the time in which i want to see results so uh and you know i'm splitting it among four people well keep track of that so you know who's getting what type of thing and that that makes it easier to test things in my opinion <clears throat> okay we want to talk about setting up your first operation so what I recommend in the article is using, is targeting yourself, doing it with an energetic trend and, a, and an identical structural link, and doing it at a time when you can focus on getting in touch with the energy from your device. I felt the energy from the device so strongly when I started that I was always, uh, I, I'm surprised that other people don't feel it as strongly sometimes. A lot of people do, and a lot of people feel it very, very strongly. Some people even feel the energy of the device from through our videos or through a, an Instagram post that we've literally had people tell us, you know, I watched your video and just something about it jumped out at me. 
and I could literally feel the energy coming through my screen, which is incredible. Uh, I'm not that sensitive, but I felt it very strongly. Other times I've had people tell us, well, I don't really feel the energy right now. And then, and that was primarily, and that was a really big uh, factor in us doing this series is when I would, when someone would tell me that, I would basically write out these articles, a much shortened version, but I'd write a really long email to them and say, okay, do these steps. And a lot of times, most of the time, uh, they would write back and say, okay, I feel it now. And I feel, I felt it really strongly. I followed the steps you gave me and I feel it really strongly. So what I would recommend doing is setting up a target link for yourself, setting up an energetic trend, an example of an energetic trend and why an energetic trend versus a calmer trend, like, um, you know, Zen like state or relaxed is that we think, and it's not always true, but we think in a lot of cases, uh, a, you, you're more likely to feel a more energetic trend. So at least that's what we recommend. That could vary for sure. If, you, if you're getting a generator to be more calm or because you're too, too stressed and then the generator helps calm you, well, that would, that would work. You know, that would be fine. That would be the opposite. So a lot of things could work. In general, we recommend doing an energetic trend. A lot of people in our societies where there's so much stress, they want more energy. So doing an energetic trend and you can get the feeling of it more. So here's an example of, so you've got your target link, this is the dog's target link, but you've got your target link, you have it in front of your generator, on your generator, in your RAD5 ring, on your generator, um, and then you write your trend link. Uh, for, the, for a first trend, for a first operation, I would just recommend a, a handwritten note, that's very easy. Do what's easy, you could use something else if you want, but a handwritten intention is fine. And the type of thing that I would suggest or that has worked for people would be something like this. You know, energy, feelings of physical vigor. You might want to phrase that one differently. Motivation. You know, so, so feelings that are likely to make you strong and wake you up and make you feel energy going throughout your body. And then I add on, something I do for myself is I add on a... I add on a, a frequency. So 14.1 hertz is associated with feelings of mental and physical vigor. It's actually one of the frequencies on the performer, and it's one of the, fre the one of the preset frequencies on the performer, and it's one of the preset frequencies on the JU1000. So what you could do, rather than writing it, if this is your trend card, you know, put your target link on your device, put your trend link on your device, turn the device to that frequency. In the performer frequencies, the specific frequencies are not mentioned on the device, but they're on the product page on the website, so you can easily see them. Uh, so you put your target link on the device, trend link on the device, or in front of the output tube, which is on the other side. Turn the dial to the, on the preset frequency generator to the frequency you want, and you're good. JU1000, same thing. Uh, the JU1000 does list the frequencies, so you find 14.1 hertz, you turn the dial there, you put this in front of uh, the silver output tube, and that's how you would do that. <clears throat> and then we, re we, re we recommend doing it at a time when you can feel your body. Let's say you're, you're really stressed with work and there's a lot of things going through your head. You've got, you're being pulled in all different directions or it's a really stressful time of life for whatever reason. We would recommend doing it. You know, you're not going to be in your body as much in most cases. And like, like we said in part one, you create your own life energy. You create your own chi, your own orgone. Uh, and the device also, we believe, creates it. So it's good to get in touch with your own body. And a lot of times the people who are very energy sensitive or very sensitive to these devices are a bit more in touch with their body. So um, what I would recommend is getting in touch with your own body, getting in touch with your own life energy, and then when you're in that state, you're more receptive to the life energy of, of other living beings and of a device. So, and then I think at that point, you can feel it the most strongly. You might feel it, like I said, this can really vary. We've had people who we, who you wouldn't expect to feel it, feel it instantly and be like, wow, what is that? So it can really vary, but in general, what we think works for the most people and is the easiest is find a quiet time for yourself, preferably alone, maybe with someone else who, your partner or family member or something, who 
is also interested in the device, both of you or just you, sit quietly, feel your own body, do energy work within yourself, which is really just bringing your own awareness into your body, different parts of your body. You know, feel your, you can do type of, uh, some of this is done in yoga, some of it is done in meditation, but you know, feel different parts of your body, scan your fingertips, uh, scan different parts of your body, and you'll find that it's not just blood flowing through, you have life energy flowing through you. People talk about your, your energetic body, which is the, the body just, beliefs, the, just beneath the surface of your skin. So what I personally like to do is I like to lay down in a lot of cases versus sit. I'm not very good at lotus, so it's more comfortable to lay down. Or just to sit comfortably, you don't have to, this is not necessarily meditation. This is just getting in touch with your own energy. I like to lay down, I like to go into my inner body, which is, you know, think of an energetic outline of your entire body that's just past skin deep. That's a good way for, for me to describe it on, based on my own experience. And so I, I work and feel my own energy and then I become much more sensitive to the energy of the device. And I think a lot of people experience that. Some people, when they do this, they meditate. Some people just sit and do breathing exercises. They just sit quietly. <clears throat> so would just recommend, you know, the basic first operation, target link, trend link with a energetic trend, an energetic frequency. You can keep the device on as high as you want or you can choose a specific frequency. We like 14.1 hertz, you could also do 62 hertz. That's a really good one. That's, uh, that's, a, that's a, a frequency associated with physical vigor. So you could do that. And then dedicated time, preferably alone, maybe with one other person. Uh, but the focus is on getting in touch with your own life energy uh, so that you can get in touch with the life energy from your device. Some people, like I said, feel the, the JU-1000, which is an entry-level device. Some feel that instantly, like, oh, that's nice energy. So it's the size of the device can matter, but uh, it, but in general, if you do these steps, we think you'll, you'll, you'll get in touch with the energy from, even from an entry-level device. And, and that's great, that's what you should do. Uh, another point on setting up your first operation, so, and this is kind of getting reacquainted with your device. If you've had a device and you've had it on, but you feel like you haven't used it properly or haven't gotten the results you want or you've stopped feeling it or something. <clears throat> so like we talked about with saturation, we believe over time, orgone will saturate will saturate you and it's like getting into a hot tub at first it's very very hot but then you acclimate to the water and it's not so hot anymore it's just warm that can happen with an organ generator as well and in part three of the series i'm actually going to talk about how to refresh operations change them up and kind of get that initial orgone glow again uh, i do that pretty frequently so does nick we kind of change it up a bit and uh, and that can cause different effects. Let's say that you've been running, you know, one trend at a certain frequency for two months. Well, in a lot of cases, if you run a different trend or a different frequency, you'll the orgone will kind of seep into cracks where the other operation had left. That makes sense. Almost like energetic cracks, and then you start feeling the orgone more more intensely again. So. In part three, I'll talk about how to refresh operations, which we recommend we do. It's kind of refreshing the energetic connection to an operation, to your device. Uh, when organ comes out of a device, <clears throat> so all of these have a hertz frequency, which you can see. That is the frequency of the elect electromagnetic pulse inside the device. And we believe that the, the frequency can color, you know, give a certain character to a different flavor of the output. For instance, I think that I feel that 14.1 hertz and 7.83 hertz feel very different. One I use to sleep, one I use for when I use to work. 432 hertz feels very different to me than 14.1 hertz. It's more balanced and calming and kind of mellow. So we think that uh, the different frequencies can certainly cause different effects. We have a frequency list on the website, which I would suggest you check that out. See what works for you, try a lot of different things. But, uh, 
but going back to the point of if you've had a generator on and you you may already be saturated and not know about it <clears throat> so if you've had it on and it hasn't gotten pulled it's a good chance you are saturated you just haven't refreshed operations you haven't maybe set up operations correctly in the first place so what i would recommend because it is more fun to feel the energy from your device there's no no question orgone feels great in my opinion it feels uh it feels fantastic people love the feeling when you feel it more you're more likely to use the device right because you're like oh this feels great what can i do with this so i think it's good to always stay connected to the energy from your device so if you've gotten saturated but you haven't really been using the device well or you haven't been enjoying it or you don't feel it anymore uh, we we lay out a process in the article to reconnect with that energy but first you have to get the orgone that's existing out of your home or your office or wherever you're keeping the device and out of yourself so to do that what we recommend is create a trend uh, that says cancel all existing operations another way that you could say that would be ground all orgone from myself and the era or area that would that would do the same thing anything that means remove all the orgone from me and my surrounding area so you run that put that trend on the on the device treat it like a normal trend and leave it on there for a little while and then uh turn the device off and you, you could even say uh, ground all orgone once the device is turned off uh this is this is more of an advanced thing but <clears throat> in a way you can schedule orgone nick talks about this in a number of his videos so uh i'll talk about that more in part three but the goal is to clear the area and yourself of orgone so that you can get more sensitive to it. So you'll be more sensitive to new orgone. So do that, run that sort of uh, trend, turn the device off, and then leave it off for a while. Leave it off at least overnight, I would say, maybe a couple days. And then you should have been, you know, in a lot of cases, the organ will have gotten pulled or it'll be grounded according to your trend. So then you can follow the steps as if you just had a brand new device, then follow those steps and I bet that you will feel it strongly again, maybe feel it strongly for the first time. And we would definitely recommend doing that if you feel like you're not in touch with the, with the energy from your device. Okay, part six is on linking multiple orgone generators. This is a very useful section Many people get multiple organ generators. Uh, maybe they start out with a smaller device and then move to a larger one. Uh, maybe they get two large devices. We, we love it when people get multiple devices, not just for the sale, but also because it means you're loving it. It means you love it as much as we do and you want to keep going deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole. And you can, so when you have multiple generators, you can link them for to combine their outputs so you don't have to okay well i'm running three operations over here and eight over here should i switch them so it's it's much better to link it it's more efficient and uh it potentially leads to more output in general so we think linking generators is a great idea we link them ourselves there's three ways to link a generator and two that you should really care about so some of the generators have, when, when you see, uh, in some of the generators, if you see a, a plug for output, an output plug, it's actually meant to, it's like output for what? It's actually meant to uh, allow for a plug to be connected to two different generators. So, there, and I, I have actually never done this, but you can, you can use a plug. So I could connect these two if they both have that input output. Uh, and I, I can't turn this around because of the way it's plugged in and, and the camera, but there, there is a way to, you see audio input, that's different. Audio input is, is to specifically energize affirmations. But if you see an output uh, jack, that's a way, you know, you can use a plug to connect to another generator that also has, that has an input jack, basically. Second way, most people don't do that. Um, that's that's fine or you can use you can actually use the input output jack to connect something external like uh, an altar or another an external well plate something like that like i said carl did, made these devices very flexible to accommodate a lot of different methods and belief systems so you you could connect it to a complete 
something completely unrelated to an, to an orgone generator, <clears throat> or you could connect it to another generator. Uh, I just want to mention that in most cases, I think you'll do one of the following two things. Um, like I said, I've never connected a generator with a cord. Uh, the first way to connect a generator, like two primary, so two primary ways to connect a generator. The first is just place them together so that they're touching. That does it. So if you can see right here, these two devices are touching uh, this. So one, two, three generators are connected. You know, I could move this to touch the RAD5 and it would connect. Simple. That's if you want to keep generators together. Uh, a lot of people want to keep generators in different rooms or different locations entirely. Let's say you want one in your home and one in your office. Then that would, uh, you obviously can't connect them by physically putting them together. So you have to connect them via structural link. And I actually in my, you know, I'm doing this for the video. I've got them all on the table. But normally I keep these two together on one table, this on another table in another room, and this on another table in another room. So I've, I use three different rooms and the only two that are connected physically are the Performer and the PFC 2000. So how do I connect the others? I connect it via structural link, which we describe in the article. So the the main thing to think about here, when I first started, so what, would, what should your structural link look like to connect generators? That's the question. When I first started, I did something kind of more rudimentary. Let me see if I can even find that. Oh, see if I can find the links here in my bag. Yeah, so here's what I did initially. I, you know, nice structural links, right? <clears throat> so, you know, I labeled all my generators based on output A1, A2, A3, and A4. So if you look, I did for the JU1000, A1, for the PFC2000, A2, for the Performer, A3, and then I have an A4, I can't find it. And then I wrote an operation, connect, uh, I wrote a trend, connect A1 plus A2 plus A3 plus A4. And that's, that's how I connected them. I talked with Nick about that, and that can work. Oh, here we go. Here's the A4, RAD5. And then I wrote uh, link with generators A1 plus A2 plus A3. So, you know, I had structural links. I think I had more of these, actually. So then I was like, link with the other generators. Um, that can work, but what Nick actually suggested, uh, which I think is a better method, it's, it's a method that he uses, it's a method that Carl uses, is creating a more distinctive structural link. A1, A2, A3 is not the most distinctive thing in the world. So in a way, if it's under, so in a way it's, it's, there's less of an energetic connection. You don't have to do a cryptographic signature or anything, but a certain minimum level of distinctiveness is probably a good idea. And you can do that very easily, very arbitrarily, and uh, so what you're looking for is minimum distinctiveness in order to create a, a strong or an adequate structural link, energetic connection. So what I've started doing, and this is the method, I'm, I just want to show you the method that I describe in the article, is I've got, I, I just chose these numbers at random, so let me show you what this looks like. So I have three cards with the same thing written on them, and here's what the card is. Hold at the bottom for you. <clears throat> so I've got the devices listed. Okay. I've got all four devices listed, and look, and just so you can see that I've got the same thing written on this one. Right. So I've got the devices listed at the top. Then I've got a string of letters and numbers, and then I went another another step, and I did a straight line and a circle. You could do a squiggly line, you could do some weird circle shape, you know, anything sort of distinctive. It's, a, it's about uh, creating connection. There, there's some studies done that if you associate uh, a shape with, you know, a, a fact or something, you're, you're more able to remember that fact when you make the shape because there's an association. It's the same idea. So this is the structural link. So I created three of these. Like I said, I normally have these two together. So I just use one. So when they're touching, I just put it in the middle. 
but or you know you could use if these were apart I would have four of these so what I do is I just take these and at the top it says link link rad 5 performer PFC ju 1000 so link and then I just take these cards and I put one here I put one there and I put one in the rad 5 so you know one here one there boom linked so um, and these two are touching, so these are linked anyway, so they don't need to be linked, but these two need to be linked with the other ones. So by creating a, a, a distinctive structural link with a trend or an operation to, to link the generators, you can link your generators. That's what we do. Like I said uh, in the article, Carl has a very, Carl has a lot of generators in his house, like a lot, and um, and he links them in very, in kind of complex ways. So, um, so that, that's what we do. And, and, and like we said, uh, structural links, you know, if, if, if you have access, you can have, a, it's a way to keep access to, to your generators uh, at a distance as well. <laughs> you know, you want to, it's good to use structural links because it gives you so much more flexibility to, of where to put things of how you can access your generator. For instance, if uh, Nick has a, has four generators set up and he has a structural link, uh, if I want to run an operation, I can just use, the, he can give me a structural link and I can access his generators if he allows me to. Makes sense? You can run an operation to not allow people to access your generator, but um, but that, that's a way. So you, it gives you access to your uh, to your generators at a, at a distance or to, to other people's generators at a distance. So we recommend using structural links. We do keep things together. It kind of just depends on what your setup is and how many you have and where you keep them. If you can keep them touching, cool. Uh, otherwise, a structural link is fine. But uh, it is important. But the main thing is that if you when you start using these for everything, like we've said before, you always want more output. You know, I, I even probably max the four out. Um, because I really do use it for a lot. You know, I mean, what are all the things that you want? What are all the things you want to do better? Uh, what are the results you want? What sort of life do you want? It's probably a good number of things. And so all of that takes, you know, all of those manifestations take life force. And so if you want to charge as many things as you want, as fast as you want, you probably want uh, as much output as you can get. So, uh, so if you do get multiple devices, and we all have multiple devices, then we would recommend linking them. It makes everything easier. When I have these devices linked, so I have the RAD5 in one room, the JU1000 in another room, and the Performer and PFC pushed together, actually in this room that I'm in right now, uh, I run all of my operations out of the RAD5 ring because it's the same thing. I don't put anything near my uh, near near the other devices. So uh, you can run so you can run operations out of a central location or on the software. The software could link to you know if you had just the RAD5, you get a, when you get the software, you get a structural link so it connects to the RAD5. If you have a multiple generators and they're all linked via a structural link, the software could deal with the whole group. You know, it could use all the link generators at the same time. But I, I run all of my operations out of my uh, out of the RAD5 ring, and that's uh, so that's possible. That's another good thing where it's it's kind of you centralize where you do it, so it becomes becomes easier for you to keep track of, and it's just one location versus you know two locations or three locations. So it's a good thing to do. Remember, like I said, you could do A1, A2, A3. We would recommend. You, you could do that, try it out, whatever's easiest. Um, but if you want to do something with like more distinctiveness, nothing crazy. Like I said, you don't have to have a cryptographic signature with, you know, an uncrackable code. Um, you want a minimum level of distinctiveness. Something like this is fine. And just make up the letters and numbers, you know. Um, and then it's good link whatever your devices are or, or put them together. So if you want to create a structural link to link generators, that's how you do it. Um, it can be weird to read, but now you've seen it. Okay, in section seven, we, I cover using the super manifestation software. 
I'm going to do a video where I break down the software in detail. I'm going to show you the software. I'm going to use the software and I'm going to show you exactly how to use it and use it in advanced ways. Um, I'm not going to do that in this video. So I just want to make some big picture points about the software. And the most important points are that the, the software can be very powerful. Um, we use it daily and what, so the, the, the power of the software is two things, two primary things. Number one, it's very easy to make a variety of different types of structural links and save them. So think about how hard it is to print something, especially if you don't have a printer. So think about how hard it is to print something versus screenshot it on your computer. We're all on computers these days. Um, it's much easier to it's much easier to screenshot something and save an image than it is to print something out. <clears throat> but if you don't have the software, then you have to print it out. So it makes it easy to do a screenshot and use that as a structural link, you know, a Pinterest board or something like that. That's a, that's a great, I've seen people use that for vision boards nowadays. So uh, you can use more digital structural links and you can save them you can you can make folders on your computer and I make up make a library of structural links that's great Pro even more powerful than that is the library of trend cards that Carl created that you can use trend cards are in essence digital versions of a trend card of an intention of a desired result or outcome so Carl created those and they are very powerful. In our experience, there's a whole library of them. In our experience, they're extremely powerful. Sometimes, to be honest with you, when we run a, an operation on the software, we won't even necessarily make our own trend cards. We'll be like, does Carl have one? And we'll use it. You know, does, the, does the software have one? And we'll grab it and we'll just plug that in. That, so it's so it, there's an ease of use. It's pre-programmed intentions made by the master himself. So they're very powerful. He's imprinted those intentions in there, and we've gotten really good results with that library. Uh, it's a large library. There's a lot of different things. There's uh, good fortune, business business success. There's a variety of things, uh, a variety of, uh, out, uh, of of trends, of desired results, outcomes, uh, or effects. And we, we've had really good results with it. We use it daily. We make our own as well. Uh, it can be, you know, we don't always want to, to, to get on the software and make something, but uh, it's a very powerful tool. We ha probably haven't talked about it as much as we should. I'm going to make a video on it that's, that, that dives deep and shows you what it looks like and would recommend it to anyone who has a mid-level generator or higher. So if you have a, uh, an LPOG 2000 DL or larger generator, so LPOG 2000 DL, RAD 2000, PFC 2000 DL, those are our three mid-level generators. So if you have a mid-level generator or a heavy duty generator, we would recommend the software. It's a fantastic tool, can make things very efficient. Uh, if you have an entry level generator, we, we would suggest you spend the money on a larger generator if, if you're wanting to, to upgrade or get more out of your generator. But it can be a great tool, especially for a heavy duty generator. It's fantastic, pairs great with Performer, pairs great with Rad5. So, um, <clears throat> so I, I would recommend the software, it works great. Uh, but I, I don't want to talk about it too much. The main thing I wanted to say is it's easy to make and save a variety of structural links so you can create your own library. Otherwise, you end up with, you know, you end up with a sandwich box of, uh, of, of written structural links. Um, and, uh, and Carl's trend cards, the trend cards that come, the library of trend cards that come with the software are immensely powerful in our experience. Okay, the next thing are, we will talk about, section eight, using Organite pyramids with an Orgone generator. I'm gonna combine section eight and nine. So, uh, section nine covers using pendants and power boosters with an Orgone generator. And, and I do have pendants and power boosters, but I don't have pyramids yet, unfortunately. Uh, they look great. Uh, I'm not sure if you've seen the pictures on our Instagram and whatnot, but the pyramids look fantastic. 
mirror shine. We're really proud of them. Uh, thank you for everyone who is. Thank you for everyone who has already gotten them. Uh, I think a lot more people are going to love them. The so I'm going to use pendants as an example uh, for pyramids as well because we designed our pyramids to function like our pendants. And if you can see right here, uh, I can't turn that up. Let's see. You see right here, I've got a pendant. And I've got a power booster actually uh, on the performer um, and a power booster in the Rad 5. But so we designed the pyramids to be like our pendants and power booster and connect with an orgone generator. A lot of people sell pyramids that are supposedly organite but are knockoffs. Uh, they, they sell them and obviously they don't have generators. We think a generator is, you know, produces a continuous stream of orgone. And when you structurally link it with our pyramids, the pyramid receives a continuous stream of orgone. Additionally, and, and the same with the pendants, same with the pendants and same with the power booster. Previously, we only offered the pendants. Now we're offering the pyramids in order to expand the effectiveness of a generator. So I want to use an example. Um, so we want to create an energetic grid with, uh, let's see if you can see it here. Make sure you can see the pendants. I go the other way. So, <clears throat> got a lot of structural links, we're getting in depth. So let's say you've got a generator and then you want to put, you, you want to fill, like we said, gener uh, eventually a generator can saturate a space. However, if it's going to a pyramid, probably occurs faster, probably covers a little more physical area. Uh, additionally, so let's say we've got, you know, I've got the Performer, I've got the PFC 2000, and I've got four a four pyramid set. Well, in each room is getting orgone sent to that pyramid, which is then passing it on to the surrounding area. So uh, additionally, you can send different types of orgone to, uh, at a different frequency or with a different intention, for instance, two different pyramids in different rooms. So let's say that you want to, one room you want to meditate, one room you want to work out, one room you want to sleep, one room you want uh, a, uh, a child or a kid to do their homework, another room you just want to relax. Uh, you, the, the energy you would want in, the, in each of those rooms is probably a bit different. So what you can do is create an operation, create a trend, uh, at uh, at a certain frequency or not, but create a trend and send that trend energy to a specific pyramid and have that pyramid pass that energy to the surrounding area, to that specific room. So for instance, if I wanted to sleep in a certain room, I might write an operation, deep, peaceful, restful sleep at 7.83 hertz, or I might go down to 7.83 hertz on the performer. So I could, I could just turn this dial to uh, the 7.83 hertz, which is also on the performer and on the JE1000. I could send that intention and that energy colored at, uh, colored at 7.83 hertz to a specific pyramid in a room. So I would expect to be able to sleep a bit better in that room. I could send energy, motivation, feelings of physical vigor at 14.1 hertz and Use the, use the preset frequency, use the continuous frequency dials, send that to, an, uh, to a pyramid in a room where I wanted to do work. And I would expect to feel differently because that intention at that frequency is being passed to this pyramid in this room versus the sleep intention at a different frequency to the pyramid in this room. So it really makes it, uh, we, we think it really expands the scope of, of what you can do with a generator. You know, another way to do all of that would be to create a trend link with a room. You could take a picture and do the same sort of thing. However, when what, what, the way these pendants and power boosters work is as organite, it accumulates, we believe it accumulates orgone coming from a machine. So in a way, and that's why it's on the silver output tube, and the pyramids are the same. So when you know, without, you know, from a physical perspective, when organ comes out of a machine, yes, it will saturate the area, 
but there's always a question of concentration, right? Is it going to, how will it saturate the area? Is it a hard stream? Will it float around until it saturates? What the Organite does, both the pendants and the, the power booster and the pyramids, they concentrate the orgone output. So it's, it's going, it, it, you're both sending an intention at a frequency, but then you're also concentrating orgone output into a hunk of Organite, in this case, a pyramid, pyramids. And that can help power an operation because it can accumulate more orgone to use in that operation versus, you know, if you just send it into a room without a pyramid, on one hand, we think it would work. On the other hand, um, it, it, it wouldn't potentially have as much power behind it because it doesn't have a well. This is almost like a gas tank. Uh, that's one way this could be viewed. It can be viewed as a, almost a, an extra gas tank for a generator. So over time it accumulates and, and the pyramids are the same. Uh, depending on the size of the pyramid, you know, the giant pyramids that we have are monstrous. I mean, they're, they're very large. So these function as, Organite basically functions as a gas tank in a way, a well of uh, orgone output from a device. When it's linked, it basically is an extra, like an emer not an emergency, but an extra gas tank. And, and the pyramids are the same way, since they're made of organite as well. They look very similar to the to the pendants in color and, and shine. Um, they're actually, uh, like I said, they, they look great. And the, you know, <clears throat> they're even an even larger gas tank because some of the or, some of the pyramids are very, I mean, the giant is monstrous. So it's a very, very large piece of organite. It's over three pounds. Uh, and so if you get a set of giant pyramids, that's a lot of organite that can accumulate orgone output from a device. So you have that much more orgone stored up to power a specific operation, to power a specific intention, to power a specific manifestation. So the reason we made the pyramids, a lot of people sell pyramids of fake organite. Uh, whether they actually accumulate anything or not is, is open for question. We've talked about visible layers and non-visible layers a ton. But ours are specifically designed in the, the, to be the same as the pendants and the power booster to be linked with a generator in order to expand the coverage of a generator. Uh, with the added benefit that specific intentions, specific frequencies, specific trend energies can be sent to a pyramid, just like they can be sent to a pendant, um, in order to expand the effectiveness of a generator. Does that make sense? I go to it. I go into it in detail in the article. Uh, to use an example, let's say I have a four pyramid set here, and I want to meditate in the middle, right? So I've got the four pyramid set. I send the intention to meditate to, you know, at, at whatever frequency you want, uh, let's say 432 hertz. So I let it fill up. I let these things fill up. I let my organite pyramids, uh, pendants as well, but pyramids would be larger. I let them fill up with orgone at, with that intention at that frequency. Let's say uh, they're, they're large pyramids. I let them fill up with the performer. So they are in a way like an orgone lamp. They are filled with pulsing life force and are just kind of radiating out, uh, radiating it to the, to the surrounding area. And they're radiating that intention at that frequency to the area. So if I'm sitting in the middle of them and I'm meditating, I'm getting all of that energy at that intention at that frequency sent to me. Now I could have a target link and that would work. However, uh, you know, it kind of depends on the size of the operation. Um, meditation, that's, that's a bit smaller, but um, but the, the point is this gives the ability to, or I could send four different intentions to, uh, you know, one different intention to each pyramid. So I got four intentions total and I can sit in the middle. So um, it's possible to, to do stuff with a target link for yourself, but with the pyramids, they're, they're, there's extra force because it's an extra gas tank. It's an extra well of energy. Uh, as they fill up with the orgone and pass it around. So we did this to, we, we created the pyramid sets to, to expand the effectiveness, um, create an, and that's what we mean by an energetic grid. So what your intentions are, maybe you want uh, protection for your family, uh, maybe you want, it just depends on, it, it could be anything. Maybe you want to put some in your office, 
some in different rooms, different intentions for each, the same intention for each. The point is when connected with a generator, you have an energetic grid that forms and you can, you can mix and match and, and color that grid any way you want. Uh, and, and that's why we think they're, they're a step ahead of everyone, not just because the, the materials that we use, which is obviously uh, the... <clears throat> and that's why we think we're a step ahead uh, in terms of pyramids. Uh, not just because of the materials we make, which we believe are obviously bear, better. We, the recipe is better. We believe the craftsmanship will be better, is better. But um, because it can be linked to a generator, and specifically designed to be linked to a generator, we think that puts it head and shoulders above any other pyramid, especially ones that are, that are knockoff organite in essence. So, uh, but the pyramids and the pendants and the power boosters fundamentally function the same in that they're designed to connect. I mean, like I said, look where this is. This is on the silver output tube. The power booster goes on a silver output tube. That's to well up the energy from the device, concentrate it in a space so it doesn't dissipate is the wrong word, but move to saturate other places, right? Uh, it, it's on this in order to to concentrate that and transfer to a structurally linked uh, pair piece. So you know, with the pendant pair, they come to you structurally linked. The pyramids also come structurally linked. Each set we link before we send it to you. So it's already structurally linked, and then you could also structurally link it yourself if you wanted to, but you you don't need to. We we link it before we send it to you. And the way the small pyramids work, Nick is going to do some videos on these, but you know, you take the small anchor pyramid, say this is a small one, you put it on the generator, now your generator is linked to your other pyramids. So, uh, and the pendants are the same way. These two things would be structured, they come to you structurally linked. So, you slip one on, you slip one on here, and you're automatically connecting your generator to the one that you hold on to. So the pyramids work the same way. The goal is to increase the utility um, of a generator to increase the, uh, to increase is the wrong word, but enhance the power output, promote energy transfer. And we think, uh, we think the pyramids are, are a game changer on that front. Uh, I mentioned in the article how to run different uh, trends, different operations, uh, so you could run one for the whole pyramid set. You could run one for each individual pyramid. And I give a couple options on that in the article. One thing you could do, so let's say you want one intention for one pyramid, one intention for another pyramid. You could simply write the trend link, right? So I've got a trend link right here. Energy, feelings of physical vigor, motivation. If this is a pyramid, uh, I could simply take this and go put it under the pyramid. The pyramid, by having the, the small pyramid on it, and so it's already linked to the generator, because the, the pyramid is linked to the generator, this trend is getting energized. So the, the, the orgone is coming from the generator to the pyramid because there is uh, life energy there. In, in essence, the, the pyramid under the pyramid becomes like a well plate. So you can, and, and with this intention, th so this intention is getting energized by this pyramid, which is also taking the energy and spreading it to the surrounding area. So that's one way to do it. Another way you could do it would be, another way you could link uh, multiple multiple different operations, you know, one, op one different operation to each pyramid would be to create a structural link like this. So let's say I, you know, if I combined these things, right, if I've got like a trend for energy and I've got the structural link. Let's just say that I, I did something like this, something like this number on this trend. Then what I could do is I could just take the other structural link and put it under the pyramid. So I could just take this, which would be link, you know, which is a representation of this, and I could put it under the pyramid. So there's, there would be a lot of ways. I could take a picture of the pyramid. You know, there there would be a lot of ways to link it. We made it easy so that um, 
you know, you just put the small pyramid on the device and all of your pyramids are immediately linked to the device's output. They need to fill up. We make recommend, uh, recommendations based on size of a generator, size of the pyramids. You know, a JU99 might take a while to fill up uh, a giant pyramid, right? Whereas a RAD5 could fill up some giant pyramids fairly quickly. So we make recommendations on that front. We make recommendations regarding size of a location, what pyramid set we would recommend, what device we'd recommend pairing with the pyramids. You can buy pyramids yourself uh, by themselves if that's something you wanna do. It, they would still ha uh, be useful, we believe, um, but we, th we think maximum utility would be paired with a generator. Um, by themselves though, they're still high quality, you know, the highest quality, you know, high quality organite that, that will accumulate life energy, ambient life energy, we believe. So, um, so they still have, uh, we believe they still have utility, but we believe maximum utility is when paired with a generator and preferably with a generator of like a recommended size or larger. <clears throat> but there, there's a lot of different ways to set up operations, whether you wanna use the one operation on the entire pyramid set and everything I'm saying applies to pendants and power boosters as well. But focusing on the pyramids because they're larger, probably more output, you know, not probably, they're larger, so they're gonna have more organ in them. Um, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of different ways to run operations involving, you know, one operation involving the set, different operations to different pyramids. So um, a lot of options. I would read the article in detail, figure out what works for you, figure out your goals, if you have questions you can always ask us uh, we send a lot of emails we answer a lot of uh, dms so happy to uh happy to to point you in the right direction once you once you have an idea of what you want to do okay i will end uh this video talking about the art of manifestation i mentioned this in the first video um and this kind of goes with you know the device is a tool not a toy um <clears throat> there you know, the device we believe will become, devices will be become more useful to you as you get better at using it. Um, so it's kind of a virtuous cycle. And what I would say is that while we believe you can have immediate access to concentrated flowing life energy at the click of a button, it doesn't mean you have access to everything you ever wanted. I, I spoke with someone recently who I'm pretty sure they just flipped on their device and I think maybe they put a picture on it. They put their picture on it and thought that it was all just gonna come to them. And on one hand, if they had intuited it right and they'd made like mental structural links, maybe that would have worked. But you know, it does, it does take more than that. You can't just, uh, you could, you could. The right person could with, if they were doing mental projection properly powered by the generator, okay. but. For most people, you're not gonna just be able to take your picture, put it on the generator, turn it on, and, and, and manifest your wildest dreams. That's where the structural links come in, you know. Um, you don't necessarily have to do it like I do it, do it like we do it, but um, you probably need to do a little bit more than that. So, um, but, but the point is that uh, manifestation, using an orgone generator, and I think once you start trying to use it the way we're describing, you'll see this. It's an art. Uh, art, if anything, and as I say in the article, is applied life energy. There's no such thing as the effortless art of. It makes no sense to say the effortless art of. Art, uh, when we say something is an art, not a science, science is something you can put in a beaker. It's something you can calculate and anyone can do it and they'll get the same objective result. An art means that you can do it a lot of different ways, get the same result, or get an equally good result that's different. In essence, you can't, you can't break art down to uh, ones and zeros. You can't break art down to simple measurements, right? There's something else that's there. And what I would suggest, what we would suggest is that what else is there is life energy. And it's in the way, the specific way in which you and only you can apply it. So using manifestation itself is an art using an orgone generator for manifestation because it becomes an integral part of the manifestation process is an art. So I wouldn't approach it, again, I'm using an analytical approach to, to using a generator, but uh, when you approach it, like I said, don't expect uh, 
follow one, two, three, and, and get what you want. Uh, embrace the challenge. Embrace the, the opportunity to work with very powerful devices. Um, enjoy the process because we believe that when you, when you master, when you become good at the art of manifesting in general, but manifesting with an orgone generator, the power, the whole world opens up for you. The power will, uh, you'll, you'll be surprised at just how deep it goes and continues to go as you get better and better at it. So um, there's an art to using these things. The only way that you'll learn that art, much like a martial art, you know, martial art's another example. Um, that's why it's called art, martial art. You can do, you can throw a punch. We can all throw a punch, but the masters throw it a little bit different. So as you master the art of manifesting with an orgone generator, you will see how deep it goes. And I think you'll be surprised and the amount of power that's really, really at your fingertips. With a structural link, anything in the, the universe is accessible. That's, that's what we believe. And with enough energy, anything is possible. So really, the entire universe is at your fingertips. And I'll leave you with that. We'll have another video for you soon. Thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you soon.